first off, the AI industry, like any other large industry that has a lot of money being thrown around in it, there's corruption, right? And there's companies that like oversell how effective their AI algos are. So like uh, uh, one example that like I wrote about several years ago uh, was this Israeli company that was hired by uh, Rhode Island during COVID to predictively say when COVID outbreaks would happen before they happen based on like various metrics from like the Rhode Island Department of Health. And the company said their algorithm was like 75, 76% accurate but that was never audited. That's like the company's own statistics. So those are probably like buffed up a significant amount. So let's say the real number is somewhere in like the 50% ballpark. Let's know better than like flipping a coin, is it? So like, what are we paying for there? It's not so much about like people, regular people's trust. It's also about like what happens when the state or like law enforcement or government give AI algorithms power over people's lives that are not accurate and should not be trusted and are not vetted. It's just that company got the contract because they have connections. That happens with every other industry. Why would it not happen with AI? Welcome to Unscripted Crypto. Today, we delve into the AI industry's challenges, highlighted by Whitney Webb's insights and recent market developments. AI's potential is enormous, yet recent events underscore the volatility and ethical dilemmas it brings. AI-related companies recently experienced a massive $190 billion loss in market value after reports from tech giants like Alphabet and Microsoft fell short of investor expectations. This downturn reflects the high stakes and speculative nature of AI investments. As we explore the corruption and overhype within the AI sector, remember to engage with us by subscribing and liking this video. Let's embark on this journey to unravel the complex interplay between technology, ethics, and market dynamics in the AI industry. What happens when a company, a facial recognition company with connections to a Silicon Valley billionaire that paid and donated to this politician's campaign or whatever gets the contract, you know, to do live facial recognition for law enforcement in various counties or an entire state? And, uh, you know, they identify people and it's, an, it's extremely inaccurate or it's a, you know, racially biased, which has been a, a problem for several years, well known and documented about law enforcement use of uh, facial recognition. Those are big issues. It's actually happened to a very significant degree already in the United Kingdom. Uh, they know, like the Met Police know it's inaccurate and it's causing problems and identifying the wrong people, but they're not going to try and change the company. They're not phasing out live facial recognition. It seems like they don't care it's inaccurate and that accuracy isn't the point, you know? It's more of creating the, the Foucaultian uh, panopticon where everyone knows they're being watched and so they behave, or they're more likely to be, behave and more likely to be controlled. And some of these big companies like Palantir, like literally have pictures of Foucault like in their offices and in their promo <laughs> material and like all of this stuff. Like they, some of these guys think that way, you know? So, AI becomes a lot more complicated than it's not just like how regular people down on the bottom levels react to it. It's also like, why are we, why is the government and, and these other entities giving so much power to AI technology that isn't proven and isn't vetted? There's a lot of overhype in AI. We also know that there's accuracy issues with AI. There's a, there's a thing, for example, called like AI hallucinations where it like returns output that just doesn't oh, yeah. exist. And then you have people right. like Kissinger and Schmidt in their book argue that what AI is seeing in those cases is a different reality that just humans can't see, that we should trust in the AI's delusions, essentially, and have that supersede our own perception of reality because AI is so much smarter than, a, I mean, that, that, that's madness. That's like a collective delusion. Um, but the problem is when you have it like doing facial recognition for law enforcement or what we're seeing with Gaza right now, AI being cho choosing who lives and who dies, or it, you know, that's also being fielded in Ukraine too, like AI and warfare before you know this this more recent conflict in the middle east broke out that has major impacts and they seem to not care about the accuracy it's not more accurate you can just have 
machine go on autopilot and you're not going to have humans in the equation saying that's immoral. I'm not going to kill. Uh, I'm not going to bomb that house with kids in it. You know, the machine's not going to do that. You know what I mean? Right. So, and then it's like, who do you hold accountable? Who's responsible? I think we just saw in the last week, um, there was like a rogue robot that hurt an employee at Tesla or yeah. one of Elon Musk's factories, right? Yeah. Well, the accountability thing is another big thing because it's basically like the analogy I use for this is like the Wizard of Oz, you know, like AI is the ultimate Wizard of Oz for the ruling class. Like they can just literally do whatever they want and say, oh, well, we're just doing what the AI algo said. And it's so smart and it can't, this is in the Schmidt Kissinger book too. It's so smart. It can't explain itself. We just have to do what it says because it's so smart. Okay. That wild. Um, okay. Um, no, because I mean, if it can't explain itself, it can't justify its actions. And everyone has to essentially through blind faith and some sort of like religious, like devotion, believe that it's smarter without proof because it's being hyped as that, you know, and, and just basically outsource how we perceive reality and events to like algorithms being designed by these Silicon Valley crazy people. The misuse of AI in law enforcement and its legal implications cannot be overlooked. The legal system struggles to adapt to AI's complexities, as evidenced by cases where computer evidence is presumed reliable without sufficient transparency. This presumption puts the burden on defendants to prove misconduct, often without access to necessary information. Furthermore, the EU's efforts to regulate AI through the AI Act signal a move towards stricter oversight. The Act aims to address high-risk AI applications and enforce transparency, although concerns about carve-outs for law enforcement usage that could lead to mass surveillance remain. As we dissect these developments, the dialogue around AI's role in society and its legal boundaries becomes increasingly crucial. Silicon Valley, which is making these products, uh, controls, has too much political power for regulation to even, like, make sense, really. So like, as far as social media goes, there's like no actual discussion about like the psychosocial impacts, really. Um, I mean, some of what you'll get is like fear mongering about like, oh, TikTok in China. But you have to keep in mind, too, that like a lot of TikTok executives at this point are like American and they have like a lot of weird overlaps with like hiring NATO veterans and like one of the big guys at like Disney, you know, it's not just like a CCP company. Like there's a lot of overlap. And even if you get on like, you know, just looking at transnational capital, like there is a lot of like back and forth between the U S and China in terms of like the elite moneyed classes of both countries, you know, just for, as an example, you know, you have a lot of involvement of Steve Schwartzman of Blackstone capital in China, like a lot of involvement. Uh, you have people like Elon Musk uh, who have a lot of uh, business connections to China and he literally wants to turn Twitter, which he bought into American WeChat. Um, and you know, the parent company, of, of like WeChat runs, not runs, but like has a huge stake in Tesla and is like one of their most active shareholders. So, I mean, it's not, a lot of times you'll get like sort of this uh, fear mongering stance about it. And it's like, of course, like China probably does stuff like that, but they also obfuscate a lot of this other stuff that's going on um, at different levels. It doesn't get discussed. Our government most certainly does all the same stuff that they accuse China of doing to Americans too. Right. And so that oftentimes gets sort of divorced from the conversation. So if like the only political or conversation about it in like Washington is like, oh, we're worried about TikTok only and the CCP and all of this. And then that's how regulation comes into being. It's not going to fix any of these problems. Like it's just a sort of like an opportunistic way for them to make it look like they're doing something. But really, you know, our government will continue to do it to the American population, even if China is not with their one app. And we have how many apps that are run by like cutouts of U.S. intelligence uh, operating social media right now? Um, I think a lot of the issues like with the government and, you know, also with like Wall Street and, and, and banking, too, are um, not as easy a fix as people would like it to think because the system is just like too broken um, and it can't regulate itself it can't investigate itself like there's definitely like a very serious break in that system um and so there has to be an alternative built by us the people in its place because the same people at the top that broke this current system are also building a new system you know for us to be herded into 
And so, you know, there's a fork in the road regardless. Like everyone knows the existing system is broken. So the answer at the end of the day about how to fix really all of this stuff is like, are we going to go into the new system that's being built for us or will we make our own system? And they're obviously going to be fundamentally different. Finally, understanding Silicon Valley's dominance requires a global lens, especially regarding AI's regulation and its geopolitical implications. The EU's pioneering AI Act demonstrates the urgency of establishing legal frameworks that balance innovation with ethical considerations. Despite challenges in defining technical standards and potential exemptions for law enforcement, the Act represents a significant step towards responsible AI governance. This global endeavor to regulate AI, mirrored by initiatives in the US and China, underscores the international community's focus on safeguarding civil liberties while fostering technological advancement. As we stand at this crossroads, the decision between navigating a preordained system or carving our own path with AI is pivotal. Your engagement on unscripted crypto is invaluable as we continue to explore these critical issues. Don't forget to subscribe and share your thoughts on how we can collectively shape the future of AI in a responsible and equitable manner.